Hi, Ranger. Uh, all right, Roger. Uh, just noticing what a wonderful camera and uh, rate of signal that you seem to have at the moment. But uh, yes, regardless, um, you said you were seeing something on Off Guardian yesterday. No, I, I this this morning the, the latest story is let's talk about Assange and extradition, um, and so you know, and so then there are lots of comments. So I, I was actually about to paste into my Substack article our conversation, uh, which is um, on my youtube channel uh, the iconoclasm and venality of assange's persecution is is the title of the video which i was about to cut and paste into my sub stack on on this um because i don't think that julian assange's crimes are, are, are merely to do with wikileaks i think it's to do with what wikileaks represents as a means of distributing information um in a secure manner uh, which I think it's the wider censorship filters are are threatened by that. That the um, what I mean by that is that first and last, for me at any rate, Julian Assange is is, is a cypherpunk, right? And so he's of the same caliber and generation as Aaron Schwartz. Now, some people believe Aaron Schwartz was assassinated. I'm one of them. And Aaron Schwartz actually is the guy that invented, if invented is the right word, RSS feeds. Now, um, in terms of end to end encryption um, and bit torrents, stuff like that, OK, they drive what I call the Panopticon jailer bot absolutely crazy because there's no there's no intermediary um, and an intermediaries represent a, uh, a way of governing, uh, restricting the distribution of information. Um, we, we had this conversation a couple of conversations ago when I was going on about thumb drives. Um, so throw this that all into the pots in, into the pot um, and the team around WikiLeaks, the cypherpunks, and Julian Assange himself. Uh, if you read the interview when WikiLeaks met Google, uh, which came out as a WikiLeaks book, which is well worth a read. Um, at one point, Julian mentions about censorship. I mean, I'm just going through these different quotes on my Substack today. But what he says about censorship is, is that when they care about censorship, that's a good thing. When they just don't care, that's a, so that, that zapper's curtain at the back of the, the, the theatre when they show the wall at the back of the theatre they don't care anymore that they care means that there's still hope that they haven't got complete control yet um and julian represents a hope of alternative distribution mechanisms and what i'm saying is that um elon musk is a pseudo fighter for those um for those ne necessaries of of liberty, basically, freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of association, freedom of religion, um, you know, uh, to be able to live life, um, you know, uh, with habeas corpus as a actually, you know, habeas corpus and uh, Julian's um, plight at the moment. Of course, habeas corpus doesn't come into it, does it? It's, it's utterly, utterly bereft of any, any, any legal process or due process it's basically he's in prison because the state said it will put him in prison we don't care about the law basically and we'll change the rules to suit our purposes um now what those purposes are i believe comes back to um the wider question of the dissemination distribution of information and how the internet has become so in shittified so cory doctorow um uh i was reading some of his stuff yesterday and cory doctorow coined the term in shittification um originally said about the in shittification of TikTok, but it's the in shittification of everything um well i think he's been talking about in shittification for a lot longer than TikTok. uh i i've only came across it a couple of years ago but I think he's been talking about it for ages. 
Um, uh, what, what is uh, well, it? Where, where whenever, whenever he coined the term, I, I'm not, you know, as I say, I, I don't know when he coined the term, but it's a very good term. Um, yeah, but he, I think he, just he, 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 I he think, wrote, um, sorry. He wrote a couple of days about about. He's written a book called The Bezel, which I think stands with embezzlement. Short, um, and he's right. talking about uh, actually, it's about it's about the misuse of power with intermediaries that we worry about, not the intermediaries themselves. And the early promise of the internet was to cut out the middleman, make everything more transparent and efficient. Where, of course, what we've done is is cut out the middlemen and, and, and actually put in their place four or five panopticon jailer bot middlemen. You know, we all know who they are. You know, Meta, uh, Alphabet, um, Amazon. Uh, and then within that subframe, of course, Amidia. Amidia, I've got to mention Amidia, the Amidia network. He is the Teflon oligarch, you know, the unknown oligarch. Uh, is it Pierre Amidia? Um, absolutely everywhere, involved in Ardhar as well. So th the article before the one about Julian it, it, it is about the, uh, by, by Colin Todd Hunter, two year old book about the farmer protests in, in India, doesn't mention Ardhar. Why? Why does no one mention art? It isn't working. It's been going long enough that, that we know that, that demonstrably it doesn't work. Um, yet, you know, obviously Rishi Sunak's father-in-law was involved and Midiar's involved. You know, um, it, it's, it doesn't, I don't understand why other people in the so-called alternative media, whatever, don't get that... Um, the canary, well, I, I call it the elephant in the room, not the canary in the coal mine. And it's an Indian elephant, and an Indian elephant has small ears. I'm saying, is is that Indian elephant signifying deafness of some sort in the alternative media? Now, may I, may I quickly say this? Now, you know, when you also say the alternative media, so a couple of things on that one. On the Omidia thing, I would not be surprised if um, the uh, resistance or whoever it is that's commenting on the uh, WikiLeaks uh, hearing now, the Julian hearing, I'd not be surprised if um, Omidia is involved in funding bits of that. I just know well, he, 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 he funded the, um, what, what, um, oh, Len Greenwald, right? The Intercept, right. Snowden. Yeah. You know, all of that stuff. That, that's funded by Omidia, the Intercept. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, so th thanks for mentioning that. So, you know, so, so you mentioned Omidia. I was like, oh, okay, well, let's have a think about that just for a moment. And then immediately, as soon as I say, mm. if you're just like, actually, the very people that, mm. are, that, that, that are involved in actually highlighting these things are themselves uh, linked in different ways at different moments with Omidia. He's managed to get in there. Another thing just to mention is that um, b -b 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 the um, oh, I'm losing it slightly. The um, oh yeah, I drew an image because also we live in this sort of collage of of images and headlines that you may not always look into. But I do remember seeing on a Twitter thread somebody replied with a photograph of um because you know when people say that rishi sunak's father-in-law and his wife still do business in russia when people say that mm -hmm. that's one thing and it's perfectly believable because infosix are a large data company what yeah. i really what i really was quite amazed by was somebody put a photograph of uh narayan murthy rishi sunak's father-in-law shaking hands with Vladimir Putin and they said this is Rishi Sunak's father-in-law and I mm -hmm. thought okay I'm gonna have to use that tin eye thing to debunk this because I didn't think it was the father-in-law you know in my mind I think of the father-in-law as being really old and it, I just didn't think of it as being him I just thought well that can't be true so I yeah. did tin I did tin eye 
And it was a photograph of Putin shaking hands with Narayan Murthy in 2004 when he visited India, you know, when he mm -hmm. was in everyone. So that work has been going on since 2004. Um, and the thing is that Narayan Murthy, as you said about Arha, um, the other guy who's the co-founder, Nilenkar, I can't remember his full name, He's he was actually he was the equivalent as we've discussed this. He was the equivalent of a cabinet member in the government um, with the Ardha thing. So mm -hmm. info were uh, still doing business in Russia, and you kind of think, oh wow. So that means that the Russia information systems, um, Infosys, are a large part of. You know, you, they must be, um, which means that one, if you wanted to hack Russia, they would be helpful. Um, but the, the other way around, um, it also speaks to the idea that there's a kind of like higher layer of things. But it sounds mm -hmm. like Putin would have difficulty surviving from an information perspective without those guys. In terms of when I say difficulty, I mean, in terms of the way that um, he's brought into their stuff. So because, I mean, in the same way that people are clients of Putin, Putin is a client of people. Um so yeah, that was one thing. Another thing that was quite interesting was, um, yeah, the idea of there being the U.S. election in November. Craig Murray yesterday said because of the U.S. election in November, Biden won't want Assange to come back before that. Um, yeah. And then Chris Hedges said, yeah, the CIA are really powerful. They'll just bring him back regardless of the political consequences. People were also talking about the U.S.-U.K. extradition treaty says you're not allowed to extradite people for political reasons. And the the supposed victim of WikiLeaks is America. And so that is a country. So that's by definition a political concept. You know, it's a political extradition. And mm -hmm. you're not allowed to do a political extradition for this. Um, another thing that was interesting was on the stage before the event, different people spoke. Andrew Feinstein spoke. Uh, so he's a former MP in uh, South Africa for the ANC. And he lives on Keir Starmer's street. So he is actually running against Keir Starmer, someone who has parents who were involved, who were like victims of the Holocaust and um, uh, someone who's Jewish. So he's basically um, standing against Starmer. The other kind of Starmer coincidence is that Jen Robinson spoke and she has been at Sandra's lawyer at different times. And who does she work for? She works for Doughty Street Chambers, which was created by Keir Starmer. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that they're all supposedly independent. They run their own cases and stuff like that. But, you know, they don't work in the same chambers. You know, it's not a complete coincidence. Uh, you know, they are going to yeah, be able to there, there are certain chambers that have a reputation for certain types of work and solicitors recommend uh, barristers or, you know, uh, to their to their clients is, is the idea. Um, and so, although there's a thing called the cab rank pin principle, which means no barrister can turn down a case, which means everybody's guaranteed reasonable legal representation, or as one lawyer once put it to me, it's the best justice money can buy. Um, I was going to say, especially, you know, <laughs> what would you ever want? Um, in Britain, uh, English justice is open to everyone, just like the Ritz. Um, yes, yeah, quite. <laughs> But so yeah. anyway, yeah. I so, so but you were saying you were saying that what what WikiLeaks represents, look, and then the yes, last thing I wanted to do was an interesting uh, question: the the timing of this, right? Why, in what I I think there's a fairly slow news cycle at the moment. Why did they not just delay it? Because if Julian's not well and he's in Belmarsh, not well. Why didn't they just postpone it and get it out? That what? Why? Why would they want such a high-profile thing at this stage? What? What are they? What are they hoping to maybe, achieve? Maybe he's, not this get establishment? maybe he's not going to get better. A couple of other things to mention. Um, yesterday, oh yeah. So tonight, uh, there's in Parliament. There's going to be an SNP amendment or something like that no an SNP motion on a ceasefire which talks about um having a ceasefire and collective punishment of palestinians uh, and so starmer 
he's saying that he's ordering his MPs that they're not allowed to uh, vote for that amendment. And so Labour mm-hmm. would do their own amendment, which would be some sort of word salad that everyone could agree on. And um, then it turned out yesterday that apparently the Conservatives, this is really weird, the Conservatives are apparently going to do an amendment to the SNP motion, which is weird because they're the government. Um, and apparently the rules of the House say that if the Conservatives do that, that Labour, there won't be enough time for Labour to put their amendment in. So the Labour MPs will only have the choice of voting with the SNP, voting with the Tory, or abstaining on all of them. And I assume Keir Starmer will say, you have to abstain on the um, SNP one, and might say, it's up to you if you want to vote with the Tory one. Um, I don't know. So that's interesting because that, the Tories have caused a problem for Starmer. What's that? Is, People, what, what, what bill is that? Is that an amendment on some bill or other? Did you no, say? no, no. It's, it's just an SNP, may, maybe an early day motion or something like that. I don't know what it is, but it's or, on on Gaza ceasefire. Oh right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. And then and then the other thing that was interesting is that yesterday in the UN, um, I think Algeria put forward a motion saying let's have a full ceasefire in Israel. Uh, everyone voted for that, but Britain abstained and America vetoed. Um, so you can see, you know, when you talk about proxies and correlations, you know, it's not exactly the same thing. But what happened yesterday at the UN is very similar to what's happening with WikiLeaks, um, you, you know, with the, uh, with the thing. And then one last thing in terms of freedom of information and your first point, which was obviously the real point to do with people being nervous about the distribution of information. Um, I was just thinking that, in a way, this whole idea of information being free and that kind of movement, that in a way, the thing that they don't like about um, what Assange has done is that, in a way, he's like a, they would regard him as a vexatious information broker. You know, he's basically just allowing people to send him information. Uh, and then he's helping it get out there, helping it circulate. And they would regard that as vexatious. And the, fi- the, the final thing, you know, that's what happens, you know, when you send an FOI and they tell you to fuck off. Like if I send an FOI to the BBC, they just laugh at me. Um, and, and if you do a few, they say you're vexatious. Um, the, yeah, so all of that's going on. And then one of the last things that Chris Hedges said was, oh no, Stella Assange, she said this, so two last things. Stella Assange said this on, on the stage yesterday. She said, don't forget that you have the International Criminal Court. Did you go um, down yesterday? No, I watched it on video. You watched it on uh, TV? <laughs> I might, I'm, I'm on YouTube. I might go down this morning. I mean, I've got some tidying and things like that too. I might go down just to, just to you know, get a couple of shots and maybe mm. say hello to them. That's it. Uh, because I get very easily sucked in. I don't want to hang around there. Um, I think, um, yeah, Stella said that, which is brilliant. She said, don't forget, she was on stage three times before, at lunch and after. Um, mm-hmm. And she said, uh, don't forget, there is um, a hearing that may be due at the International Criminal Court uh, regarding war crimes in Afghanistan. And she said, some of the evidence that has been compiled in relation to war crimes in Afghanistan was supplied by WikiLeaks. Um, and that is a big reason why America do not like him, because he's the kind of person who's prepared to do that. And then the last thing to mention was that Chris Hedges yesterday said he didn't think any of this was anything to do with Iraq. And as far as he was concerned, it's all really to do with Vault 7. The CIA are very pissed off about Vault 7. Yeah, well, yeah and Vault the- 7 was actually Snowden anyway, and the database was actually held by The Guardian. So that Vault Vault 7 was in the Snowden leaks. I thought that Vault 7 was 2017 that happened, and that was that guy, Joseph uh, Schultz. Snowden was a long time ago, but Snowden was Vault 7. Vault 7, I think, or or, or is Vault Vault 7 on WikiLeaks? It was announced in 2017. It was in 2017, and that guy just got given 40 years for oh God, okay right okay well maybe that's what it is then i look all seven, all seven was how the cia can hack into samsung and yes Apple's so and, I, and I, I agree with chris hedges on that i mean i think that's what they're 
much more upset about that's um because that 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 delivers a method of, of of people communicating this 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 is about freedom of communication freedom not not merely freedom of speech it's almost freedom of thought okay so your ai wallers like musk uh kurtz while um you know basically all the nutters and i do think elon musk is insane i think they're all insane they're all a bit in wales that yeah that there's a word in wales tup which means you know a bit deranged you know so they're all sort of slightly tup or stupid or whatever but but in a um it, uh, they're like high functioning asperger's people really um now <laughs> and we're not oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sorry, sorry. That, was, that was almost below the belt <laughs> so what what what, what the, the where where julian fits into that mix mix is actually at quite a lot of levels right um and i think the 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 cypherpunk bit ties into things like cryptocurrencies particularly bitcoin right and the involvement i see it's well, don't, hold on, hold on, don't forget this. Uh, we've mentioned this before, and um, I think I'll probably upload this onto Twitter X. Uh, you know, let's keep it relatively short and I'll upload it. But um, don't forget, Craig Wright, with whom you've had some contact, he is involved in the court case. I've never had any contact with him. I've always been one step removed. Oh, okay. I, only had, I had an exchange with him on Twitter when he, when he blocked me because he made a ridiculous statement um what was it anyway craig right can't be corrupted he said like monopolies aren't corrupt come on i <laughs> what did he say? What did he say? a market of one can't be corrupted it was ah. I, it's, it, this is going back to when um before he'd actually been outed as it were um okay, and uh, yeah well, just, know, just, just, just languages looping and stuff like that you know, I, well, just, I just, just to say this, you were mentioning Bitcoin and um, for anyone watching, Craig Wright is an Australian computer scientist and he's basically said that he's Satoshi Nakamoto and the guy, Jack Dorsey, who used to own Twitter, is part of some group who are taking Craig Wright to court because they want an English judge to create a negative ruling to say, you are definitively not uh, Satoshi, which reminds me a little bit of how the government are trying to create a law saying that Rwanda is safe, full stop. You know, it's these mm. kind of like, King Canute is kind of in denial. Yeah. You know, it's and kind so of like he, a new sort of settled science, a settled fact. <laughs> yeah, it's like a settled thing. fact, which it's, it's a double, double think thought crime. Double yeah, plus bad thought that? crime to, to, to go against the settled fact of the state. Yeah, Jack Dorsey <laughs> was at the Super Bowl wearing a Satoshi t shirt. You said, yeah. And yeah, I thought that was that 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 was curious. I mean all, all, all this is all of a piece, right? So like Ju the whole thing with Julian's been going on since two thousand and ten. I mean, when the Swedes got involved in this, I'm in Sweden at the moment. Um, it was, I think it was 2010. He, he came here about basing his servers or WikiLeaks servers in the Pirate Party's server right. um, location because there are particular rules here. When Sweden go into NATO, I wonder how that will affect the, 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 the uh, uh, part of the reason we have such good broadband and and why Sweden was so ahead of it is is that NATO's broadband did run up Sweden, that um, I, for whatever reason, you know, I mean, even as a neutral country, presumably that was okay in some way, um, but the what's happening at the moment, Ranjan, I believe, is the Bank of International Settlements who've done lots of PR the last few days explaining who they are 
Okay. What they're trying to do is tie a nice little bow over a financialized world governance through um, through digital currencies. Okay. And so we're at the um, at the denouement of this whole process, which has been going on for the last um, well, it must be 35 years. I think it's 35 years since global warming took over from global cooling as the, you know, the reason why we all must hate hydrocarbons and we must hate CO2. And we, we're all trained to call CO2 pollution, which of course it isn't. Um, carbon monoxide, CO is pollution, but CO2 is not pollution, right? It just isn't. Um, and if you say gas of life, people say, oh, you're one of those, you're a denier, right? Now, that whole mindset, okay, is collapsed and condensed into this neat little bow that the Bank of International Settlements is um, now trying to uh, impose on the world through it, all of the captured means of distribution of media, okay? And... Um, I don't know who said it was it volume you know know who you can criticize can't criticize or whatever what you can't criticize is settled science the science climate science and of course we, we had a big rehearsal with uh, Fauci I am the science you can't contradict me I am the science right but what this whole idea of science being the new the, the new priests of the climate religion right scientists or sci um climatologists um and i just think we're we're at the we're at the peak now um of trying to roll that one out and make it speak and, and therefore dissident voices are more dangerous now than ever um which again in my mind that doesn't make sense because um Whichever way you look at Julian, he has been a very effective dissident. Now, whether he's, you know, uh, uh, people say all sorts of things about Julian Assange, but he has been a very effective dissident for someone, whether it's for the people or someone else, who knows? He has been an effective dissident and is basically doing the porridge of uh, an effective dissident that who, who, who's been collared gov you know that 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 seems to be the thing but play you have to place that into the context of all of these other things that are going on at the moment you know like you said the the un with gaza houses of Commons on, on gaza um what's happening in russia navalny dying in prison um, yeah, and, and obviously you also said so you're saying some of what i said and i'm saying some of what you all said you said the media network and um uh Ard Har and particularly what i noticed about rishi sunak's father-in-law being Ard Har is an infosys thing and it looks like mm -hmm. um, putin bought in big time a long time ago and is still doing that which of course the dwp are doing here um Oh, do just, your, just, your, your, your Chris Eubank impression, you know, there are levels, no levels of geopolitics. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So what is it? Boxing is a boxing is a dirty sport and I am the world champion. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I love you, Um And so you've got this um, Tucker Carlson. Someone sent me a Tucker Carlson video. He was being interviewed by someone who looked like Steve Bannon, but wasn't. And he basically said, and this is in the last couple of days, Tucker Carlson said um, that this guy, Boris Johnson, he was brilliant, by the way, Tucker Carlson. He said, this guy, Boris Johnson, who for a moment was the prime minister of Great Britain, he, um, uh, he accused me of being a Kremlin mouthpiece. And then he said, this guy's real name is Alex, jo Alex Johnson. He fucking calls himself Boris. Like, and he has done forever. And he's calling me a Kremlin mouthpiece. He laughs at that. And then he said, he basically, uh, I, I've been trying to interview him for a long time. I know people that know him. Um, and you're thinking, shit, you mean like Steve Bannon and Jacob Rees-Mogg. And, um, and then he said, uh, so I got them to ask him 
for an interview and his people eventually came back and they said one million dollars um so that was that was funny um but carlson tucker carlson is obviously he was murdoch's mouthpiece he's close to musk he's friends with russell brand when carlson talks about ukraine and uh, alex yeah yeah he's tight with alex Jones. when carlson talks about ukraine even in yesterday's video i just saw a few seconds you know he says you know he says it's just a massive money laundering pit and that is exactly what julian said in 2011 he said it's not about war it's not about infinite war with afghanistan it's about infinite uh money, tax and money laundering so that mean, brings me back to the holomoisky case because we've not spoken mm -hmm. that much you know but i do remember going and they said that they don't expect a verdict until the summer um so you've got the whole thing of the the senate or whoever in america uh, saying yes to funding the Ukraine war as well as more money for Israel. Uh, the EU doing the same thing. Um, Navalny dying, um, the timing of that. And um, it to me, it just feels as though they're all on the same fucking side. And they're all just they're all just working together because they all they all benefit from them. There being this illusion of like war and conflict and stuff like that because you know covid was enough to make us all shut the fuck up uh, etc you know or the majority of people to just obey and now they're going into this so they just always act like they're important and they're in a hurry and that we have to just shut up and not be listened to um and just take our medicine yeah. well i think if your stamp if your foot hasn't been rather if your face hasn't been stamped on by the fascist boot right by now it will be at some point in the coming year i think you know like orwell's reference to you know um how, how it feels to, to to live under a totalitarian regime and the device of the totalitarian re regime is the internet as the Panopticon jailer bot, it is. Um, and it is the device of detecting pre-crime, right? So, um, so this is Check Your Thinking and Harry Miller and all this stuff. I mean, I, I've spent the, the last month just going back over some of the Web3 stuff. I'm not, I think we're back in 2019. Um, and in 2019 or in 2016 or in 2010, whenever they would have rolled this stuff out, if they thought that the climate um, narrative was strong enough to impose rationing the air you breathe out, because they don't think they can go as far as rationing the air you breathe in. OK, um, so central bank digital currencies, the distribution network of rationing, rationing carbon, and the carbon they want to ration is the human being, right? That may sound sort of bizarre, extreme or whatever, but, you know, boiling it all down, that's what it boils down to. Um, and to carry what, off what, such what, an outrageous what, 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 lie. What does rationing humans mean? And then please carry on with what you're saying. Uh, well, rationing the amount of human carbon or carbon synthesized into the form of human beings. So, you know, that's uh, Bill Gates' it's famous, famous equation, you know, you've got to get one of these close to zero. So both depopulation and limited consumption for the, for the whoever's left. Uh, well, you know I'm a cornucopian, so none of it makes sense to me. I think it's all nonsense. No, no, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I know that, but I'm saying that's what you're saying they're saying. That's what they want. They yeah. want yeah. human. Yeah. So, well, those it, people who are here to do out, that. It, it's, it's an outrageous lie. And for it to stick, you know, it's, it's that CIA guy says, we know we've done our job when everybody, what everybody believes is false. That's, you know, so to believe these huge falsehoods okay requires um uh, a saturation of information through smartphones through tablets uh uh you know they haven't managed to chip everybody yet thank goodness right 
And so this is the... It, I, it's not the last roll of the dice. I did a blog about two years ago when I said, look, COVID is over. It was over with a couple of the marches all over the world. There were big protests. But also when that doctor on Sky News, when, when Sajid Javid said to him, oh, well, you'll have the jab, will you? And the guy said, no, I won't. Why not? Well, because it, you know, various reasons. I should have, I've got other colleagues. Um, Sajid Javid, the banker, says to the consultant doctor well I, well I suppose that's your opinion we're asking lots of experts you know you know and that's not what they're you know for me I think that was where it just the, the absurdity of the whole thing is encapsulated in that live clip on tv and I, I, I think that's like an emperor's new clothes moment it's like hold on mate your pecker's showing yeah it's just you, you know um so so and what what I, I at the time I wrote to John on the slog and said look we 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 we've won we've won the league we haven't won the cup or whatever um next season they'll come back with with with, with, with a reinforced first 11 whatever well you know okay, okay. So, the just, matter is, their first 11 isn't that strong anymore okay they, just, they, just 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 in case we're going off just to say you said the bis have been doing some uh, pr recently yeah you look on their website and you'll see they're sort of saying oh we're in whatever six yeah, countries yeah, let, me just, let me just let me just throw a couple of things at you and then you can get back to where you're going so you said the bis have been doing some pr lately you mentioned cbdc's central bank digital currencies you talked about rationing carbon and then you talked about rationing humans um and then you referred to so the climate being ready for um like as in you know like the, the discussion climate being ready for this rationing you talked about pre-crime and then you talked about the cia saying we know we've done our job when everything everyone believes is false where are you coming from and what are you saying where am i coming from I'm no no no. i mean in relation to this you're saying something and i've interrupted you a hundred times so i want to get you back on what, what were the things that you're basically saying to do with the bis and that? Well, to tie it up in a neat bow and the yes. metaphor i was to use is the bis and the faction of the oligarchy establishment are trying to tie a little neat bow with all of these narratives that end in that place carbon rationing okay right carbon-based currency right they've tied and the trouble is the material that they've got to tie that bow with you know, it's like you know when your laces break and eventually they get so short that you just can't you know yeah, the knot you do ain't a bow well i i think their narratives are so frayed because they are so outrageous that there simply isn't the material there to tie the bow and so we are up the how many fingers have i got up stage i did a blog with a bunch of pit outcray traders all with you know four fingers up that's what i meant by that you know i've got a picture of the 1954 thing when 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 winston is uh, is being interrogated by o'brien and o'brien saying how many fingers am i holding up? yeah yeah um and and this is the thing the bow you know we're all supposed to say what a beautiful bow that's a really believable bow wow my oh my it's the best bow i've ever seen in my life it's a shit bow you know that it's made out of material you know it's like the tying a shoelace with with with, with broken laces on the shittiest trainers in the world ever you know you can't make a bow with that much material can i can i make a suggestion? and so now we're on how many fingers i got up and that's what the internet's for and that's what tyrannizing and persecuting people like julian assange is all about is to make them an example to make the rest of us afraid that's what they're all about my, my linkedin thing is down at the moment i i was doing the web three stuff and i i put it into a blog all the, everything i put on linkedin is in the blog yesterday but but they, i i have to i i have to show government identification now to prove i am who i am to get my linkedin thing back up i mean linkedin's been in shitified for years I mean, I only went, to, you know, in your, in your list back so years ago before LinkedIn existed. And I think LinkedIn did buy Plaxo at some point, which is the only reason I ever went over there. So Plaxo was a non in shitified useful well, you know thing. You know who owns LinkedIn, don't you? Pardon? You know who owns LinkedIn, don't you? Go for it. Tell me. The same people who own this. We're talking on Skype and LinkedIn is also owned by Microsoft. 
Um, right. Yeah. Well, as you know, I mean, I, I, I'm I'm not I'm not a big fan of any of them. They're not innovators, any of them. They 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 basically they 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 they're walking across the backs of of uh, and shoulders of of of. of prior generations you know they're, they're mean merely um front men of the things you know um I, I, like i said i've got a lot of disdain for the current faction of the establishment that think they're running the show and they're running it badly i mean I, you know and I, i've been quite outspoken in my own small way um in actually saying this you know um you know i i never make any bones of the fact i consider myself to be part of the establishment you know i might be a bit of a black sheep here and there but you know there's there's nothing um outside of the bounds of of of, of being pretty straight up and down normie you know i, I i've had an interesting life but you know at, at its heart um you know my 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 heart lies in you know normal you know that what you know that idea of right well th this is nice we're all in this together you know we've been down the pub for a pint you know it's nice isn't it to feel you know when do you know i mean I, so it's not like oh i I'm, i don't feel slighted in any way shape or form but i can see the thing isn't working you know the, the system is moribund broken kaput and not fit for no, purpose no, Roger, Roger, you know what you said just there um mm -hmm. i think when you look at say someone like richard tice uh, there's a brilliant video where he was being interviewed the other day or he was on some tv show and they just said look reform's a corporation and and he basically just said yeah what's wrong with being successful we are a corporation we're made up of successful business people we want to get the country up and running yeah, I, I'm, and I'm all for people with learning difficulties like richard tice doing well i don't think he should be excluded <laughs> from opportunities simply because he's not that bright so yeah. you know, there's a, that, that shows the system is working perfectly as as, as on the tin you know well, a, 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 a meritocracy for dunces well, what was <laughs> Was, was some of what he said sounded like you, but at the same time, I knew that what he represents is not the same thing at all. Because, as you said, he's one. Well, of he made his money working for a company that used to be a client of mine, that's owned by a very large Swedish family. Right, Towns of Securities. Um, he was the CEO long after my days of doing stuff for them, but. Uh, uh, and then he made his family money with a company called Sunley Holdings, which again, bit of resi, bit of thing, you know, um, family money. Um, I, I mean, he's like one of these sort of, you know, a very good skier, you know, good looking chap, very athletic and all the rest of it. But at the end of the day, he's a bit of a Tim Nice but dim, in my yeah. opinion. So should we should we bring this to an end and catch up again soon? Um, I'm glad you're back in Sweden. How long are you back for? Uh, just um, I'm back back in Saint on Saint David's Day back in Wales. Okay, so, so yeah, it's, it's, it is nice to be back, but you know, it, it's um, 2023 was absolutely appalling, and 2024 is likely to be worse if the Bank of England doesn't start cutting interest rates, which they're you know they're really trying not to do. Um, there's another sort of banking crisis in the states which isn't even hitting the radar i think new york community bank is really really up against it uh, it'd be interesting to look at repo figures for the fed again at the moment like i said we're back in 2019 and whether they choose to i don't i think the pr preferred choice is not to save the smaller banks and have further consolidation in banking to try and tie this bow that they basically can't tie a bow around this fuck up now um, it's, it's just a huge clusterfuck of incompetence, stupidity, greed, criminality uh, and general morons running stuff they don't understand. I mean, that's that's what we're really looking at in the world. Um, what about, um, what, what about um, so what's his name? Andrew Bailey yesterday. I saw a headline saying um, that it said this. It was so funny. It is 
we may already be out of we may even be out of the recession already and it was, only, it was only on thursday that they were talking about it only being a technical recession and things like that it, it, it it's the construction sector is an absolute bloodbath which is ongoing right and and you know the the inflation that was deliberately unleashed or incumbently unleashed during all of the uh, responses to event 201 um uh, okay it was the supply chain effects that did for construction because as i, I i've been pointing out that disinflation is actually debt deflation Right, the new word people use disinflation. It's when inflation starts slowing down, so prices are yeah. still going up, but the the rate at which they're going up is slowing down. Well, yeah. if 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 you pump up the money supply, which generates that inflation, then you stop and go down. That that bit in between is a debt deflation, and that's where you get to consolidate in a creorder out a chaos sort of way. So this is, um, you know. Belcher and Nitsen and, and all this sort of thing. And if you look at the numbers, that's what you'll find. I, mean, I, I did a, a very short blog about we're walking into a 1930s type of debt deflation and politics, um, which which we are. Uh, and it's. Yeah, it's, it's quiet. As long as. Bailey is still in a job. We know we're in trouble, right? I, I read somewhere the other day. Um, oh, it actually was on Hacker Noon. Funnily enough, uh, I haven't read Hacker Noon for ages. It's a hacker online magazine. It's very good. Um, Hacker Noon, like like N W O N. H A C K E R N W O N. Uh, there are loads of links to it in the blogs I did yesterday, but but the, the, the thing about um, this, this the, it was talking about the Horizon scandal. I mean, this is a hacking computer magazine, so it's sort of saying, right, what went wrong with the regulation of computer stuff? And one of the points it makes it, it was actually that the post office was actually subject to the FSA, and that would have been at the same time as Bailey was there at the same right. time that he was hugely involved in all of the banking scandals which haven't come out properly yet so it, it it's you know just saying you know it's, it's a very good point. that is a very good point um at the moment in in today's news this week uh kemi badenoch the business secretary has been at war with someone who used to be chair of the post office uh, because he put out a quote in the Sunday Times saying that he was told uh, don't pay out any compensation to the postmasters until after the election. Um, mm -hmm. And she basically started to say, oh, he was being investigated for bullying. And he's come back and said, I don't know anything about this. Uh, I'm just telling you what, what happened. And so it made me think, if you think about the way in which this, this story is being run, and mm -hmm. you think about thing and you saying look these people never learn it's exactly the same playbook and system which is leak you know blah 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 except the leaks are now the government that are doing the leaks you know yeah. it, it, it's not that they don't learn what they do works it's that we all forget that's the problem so this is the walter bury and rock thrown in the pond you know mm. uh, or in, in, poli in election politics it's the old dead cat bounce you yeah. know uh, Lytton Crosby and all that stuff, right? Um, attention spans aren't long enough. Now, pay attention, class, you must do better. Yeah, yeah, we've got to train our attention spans. And the attention span required at this this part of, of, of the, the whole process is actually 35 years or so. Uh, in fact, really, it's 1990, no, it's 1970, 71. You know, so the new Bretton Woods, right? And now what's happening? You know, you, you that that's really what you need to do, um, and you need to fit together your uh, parallel narratives along the different headings for a framework to kind of get to some sort of understanding of where we're at, um, and. Uh, 
the guy I would recommend on that is um, what's he called Bogdanovich. He's a professor of history Vernon. or international Vernon relations Vernon. at Cambridge. Yeah. Very, yeah, very good. Uh, he he like gave a series of lectures, which I watched about three years, four years ago, which are absolutely excellent. Excellent. Are they, about the, are they about the British Constitution? Are they about the, the Constitution? Yeah, they're what, they're what, about what? that and they're about banking. They're, they're about governance in general. He, he talks, for instance, about the, the, the uh, currency snake, which was as big a bigger bang to 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 the british uh treasury like and soros broking the bank so i did yeah. a blog one day i decided right how did soros do that where did he get that 10 billion quid from to 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 buy the future or you know did to you do, get to, it from to, 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 he must have borrowed the somewhere yeah you know it, it, that was a lot of money back then he borrowed it, it in the morning yeah so you know, the, 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 the point is, right, and this is the point I'm saying, is is you need to look over these time scales and see who who it is that keeps cropping up, who which organisations they represent, OK? And, you know, QE Bono, who, who benefited, you know, and, and this this march to greater centralisation, greater monopoly. Um, so that I did put up and it's got subtitles now. The Richard Moore interview with um, uh, Sousa Priano, which actually was recorded in 2007 before the financial crisis. So he wrote his book, Escaping the Met, Met, Met Matrix, around 2006. Well, um, in, in terms of, <clears throat> I, I call them milestones along the way. So uh, what Harold M Macmillan called events, dear boy, uh, events. Right. The, the events um, which push narratives, you know, put, 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 push plans out of kilter, slow them down, speed them up, push them off the rails, that sort of thing. OK, so the, I, 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 I do think that that um, uh, what we what we must do is laugh at this attempted tying of the bow upon this clusterfuck of incompetence. Just it just has to be absolutely hung out to ridicule. I mean, I've been in the past. I, there's a guy in Washington that I corresponded with for many years, and he would often tell me off, sort of, you know, uh, look, Roger, you must go easier on these people. You know, you 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 you, you need to. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, if someone's being stupid and they're pretending not to be stupid, and there's a discussion going on, I will go for the jugular. Um, and you know, but I, I n now is not a time not to go for the jugular. You know, I, 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 <laughs> no, okay. you know, no pussy footing of uh, of now. Let's get let's get our intellectual retaliation in first. That's okay. that's what we have to do. <laughs> Right, Roger, I think let's wind up. Um, are you, well, I'm glad you're back in Sweden. Um, I'd like to think that we'll have another chat tomorrow morning. Um, and um, yeah, if you're about today, I'll send you some stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Cool. All right, Ranjan, nice talking to you. Have a good day. And you, <laughs> do you do it. Bye. Bye.